Hi guys, welcome to Too Cool for Middle School. I wanted to make a tag video. I've actually had this in mind for like two and a half years, like ever since I started my channel, I wanted to make a teacher tag. And thank goodness, Genuine Teaching and Apples and Tiaras made a teacher tag a couple of months ago, and so many people have done it, and I love it because it helps me get to know all of the other teachers here on YouTube. So pretty much if you've made one, I've watched it. I love watching those. I try to find every single one that's out there and make sure that I get to know you guys. And I went on kind of like a teacher tag binge the other day and I think I think I got them all. I think I've seen all of your videos and I wanted more. I wanted to know more about you. And I had some questions that I had like been writing down in my little planner for a while, so I thought I would just make another one because I want to do another round. I want to hear even more about all of you. So I thought we'd call it the hashtag I teach to tag. On Instagram is where I meet like most of the teachers that I follow. There are some amazing like teacher bloggers and TPTers that put all their stuff up on Instagram. I love seeing your classrooms and your outfits and your products and your feet up on your desk at the end of the day. I love stuff like that. And so there are two hashtags that usually help me find teachers and one of them is hashtag teachers follow teachers and the other one is hashtag I teach too. And I just thought that one was always so cute like I teach too. So let's get started with the tag. I came up with a couple of things I wrote down here in Roygibiv with flare pens because I'm a teacher. So the first question is kind of a repeat just because we got to get that out there. Um, what do you teach and where? I'm just always interested in like what state people teach in. I teach middle school history and English in LA, basically Southern California. Every year my teaching assignment is a little bit different, but for the most part, I've been teaching 6th grade English and 8th grade history for the past couple of years. This year I actually get a section of 6th grade history and 8th grade English, so I'm switching it up a little bit. Somehow I never seem to get 7th grade. I don't know, I don't know why, but I need to get some 7th grade in there soon. The next question is how long have you been teaching? So I have completed five years of teaching and then next year I'll be going into my sixth year. The next question is did you always know that you wanted to be a teacher? I'm just always kind of curious about this um, like if you got into teaching a little bit later like after a different career or if this was just your plan from the beginning and for me I actually lost a bet when I became a teacher. So both of my parents were teachers. My dad was actually my seventh grade science teacher. And as most of you know, seventh grade science is the human reproductive system. So that was really fun. And my mom taught a little bit of everything. She's taught at a prison. She's taught special ed. She's taught elementary school. She's taught high school special ed. So she's kind of been everywhere. She was never actually my teacher because I wasn't in prison. But anyway, everybody would always tell me, like, you're going to become a teacher too, like, you're just like them and you're definitely going to become a teacher. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to be a teacher just because my parents are. And my friend Daniel told me our senior year, he was like, when we come back at our 10 year reunion, if you're a teacher, you owe me 10 bucks. And if you're not, I'll give you 10 bucks. And I was like, okay, game on. That's fine. I'm not going to be a teacher. <laughs> and when I went to college, I was initially a music major. I don't even really know what I thought I was going to do with that, but I studied music for a couple of years, realized I am really not good enough at it to become a professional musician, but I was a music teacher. I worked in a music store so I could get like discounts on my sheet music and stuff, and then I started teaching piano there and voice lessons, and as it turned out, like I was a much better teacher than I was musician and as I was taking like music history classes I ended up falling in love with history. Um, I also have a minor in kinesiology because I love sports, I love like working out, physical activity, I love what it does for your body and for your mind so I try and incorporate that actually in my teaching so I just kind of have like a lot of interests and I, I didn't think that it was going to lead into teaching but it's kind of the perfect Thing for me and eventually I just had to be like all right all right I'm accepting my fate I'm accepting my destiny let me set aside 10 bucks for Daniel at that 10 year reunion and I'm just gonna be a teacher and I love it and I am perfect for it so 
Everyone was right, should have listened from the beginning. The next question is, what is your typical hashtag teacher OOTD or outfit of the day? What do you like to wear to school? Like what's your typical outfit? I think it's partially because I live in LA, but we are not required to dress like super professionally at my school. So my typical outfit is like um, dark skinny jeans, some kind of like a tunic top and some wedges. And a lot of the time my hair is up in like a top knot. Sometimes I'll wear like dresses with leggings and flats. I'm really into like long flowy cardigans. I like those for teaching, but I'm rarely in like a blazer or like slacks or anything. I would if, if it was required of me. I think that looks really nice when everybody at your school is dressed super professionally, but we just, you don't really have to, so I don't, and I dress pretty comfortably, but I like it. This year at the end of the year, some of my girls told me that I dress so Tumblr, and I was like, thank you, I think. The next question is, what do you typically bring for lunch? Now, teachers notoriously have like no time for lunch. We're always just like shoving down some random food into our mouths before we have to go back to class and the bell rings again. At my school, we actually get 40 minutes for lunch, which is really nice so that like for the first 20 you could eat and then for the last 20 you could have some kind of like a club meeting or whatever you needed to do with your students or like if you need to have like a department meeting you could do that for the last 20 minutes so um, it's nice when you don't have any meetings and you've got that full 40 and so I usually bring the same exact thing every day like I am not creative when it comes to food I just bring what's easy and I just bring this frozen bag of stuff called melodious blend from Trader Joe's it's like garbanzo beans and I don't I don't even really know what's in it it's really healthy apparently except for that I like douse it in salt I just throw it in the microwave for a few minutes and then throw it in a bowl I just kind of eat for sustenance like I don't know that's like the last thing I can be bothered with in the morning so I usually like on the weekends just buy five of them and then bring them every day of the week I know that's really sad and everyone just knows that I bring those like people will tell me like I went to Trader Joe's the other day and saw the melodious blend thought of you I'm like I know however if I forget my lunch then right across the street from our school is this Thai restaurant it's like a to-go Thai place and they have really good actually their pad thai is not amazing but they have this like drunken noodles dish that's really good and, like pad si u is really good so um yeah it's not super healthy for you or anything but if i do forget my lunch i just it's my awesome excuse to go get thai food the next question is what is one of your favorite books on teaching and so between my husband and i because he's also a teacher we have tons of teaching books in this apartment just between like our two credential programs, um, but one that I read recently is The End of Molasses Classes by Ron Clark, and I had asked you guys for some good books on teaching to read over the summer because I just was kind of like burnt out on reading teaching books. There wasn't really anything I had in mind, but this one is really good. I don't know if it's just because I'm on the West Coast that I hadn't heard of Ron Clark except for like on Instagram, but I saw a bunch of you guys posting about Ron Clark and... Thank you. This is like so, so inspiring. So Ron Clark was like the Disney teacher of the year and he was like the national teacher of the year. He's just very talented and very passionate and really connects with his students and gives everything to his students. And he was on Oprah and then he wrote a book that Oprah endorsed and so he sold a bunch of them and with the profits he started his own private school so that he was just able to do whatever he wanted. And it sounds like an amazing school, like they have this huge blue slide in the middle and you can get from the top floor to the bottom floor by going down the slide. They take their kids to foreign countries every year, they've been to six of the seven continents with their students. Um, they purposely take kids with like behavior problems and learning problems and then also kids that you know are doing great just to show that like their methods will work with any student and they invite teachers to come see them in action and that's kind of like how they fund their school now they get some donations and stuff but they they fund it at least partially by other teachers wanting to come and see what they're doing because they're so successful. So anyway, in this book, um, he's got 101 tips to, you know, to end molasses classes or just like make your school or your classroom or your relationships with parents and teachers and students much more exciting and he's so full of passion that it's really infectious. He's very direct in his writing and so my 
caution is that you will probably be offended by something that he says because he's just kind of like, this is how things are. If you don't like it, I don't care. But I mean, not in like a rude way, but just like, this is how he sees things and he knows that certain things work. A couple things that kind of struck me the wrong way though, and I, I'm only telling you just because like, if they strike you the wrong way, like just keep reading because the rest of it's really good. But um, he's says that I think his teachers stay from 7 till 545 and then I think they do this thing which I, I love this idea it's like parent tutoring night so he like shows parents how to help their kids study from like 6 to 730 um, and so he wants all of his teachers to at least be there until 545 and he says that when teachers leave at 330 he thinks it's really sad and that they must think that they are above staying later to help anybody which is totally ridiculous like he is not married and doesn't have kids and he does kind of admit at the end of the book that like starting that school and running that school um, was a huge sacrifice and if he had had kids of his own it might have been a little bit different and so since he doesn't he's able to give almost you know 24 hours of his day to his kids and it's awesome and it works but I don't suggest that for everybody I don't think everybody should stay until 545 like if you've got kids you need to pick them up and you need to spend time with them and he's really big on um, like being an example and so you need to be an example of a good parent if you're a parent or of a good spouse if you're a spouse and take care of your family and spend quality time with them and it's just not realistic for you to spend that much time at school when you have other responsibilities. If your relationship with your family isn't good, it does affect your teaching and you need to make sure that, that those closest to you are taken care of before you pour out into people at your school. Okay, he also said something kind of weird in my favorite section. And this section is the role of the parent in the success of the child. And I just thought this was amazing. Like he tells the parents just like, how things are, how school really is, that like your kid is gonna lie sometimes to get out of trouble, like don't dig them out, like let them face their consequences. It's really good. Um, there's even this list on page 119, like um, for parents, just like what they can do to help their kids. And parents do always ask that kind of stuff and I sometimes don't know what to say. So I'm gonna print this out, like type it up and print it out and say it's from this book and give it to my parents this year because I think it's a really good list. The only thing is that he um, like, cautions against helicopter parenting, which I totally agree with, but then he says that because of helicopter parents, we have all these like 20-somethings and 30-somethings still living with their parents. I was like, dude, <laughs> we had a housing crisis <laughs> and we had a full economic crisis and so there were people getting out of college with student loans, not able to get jobs that they were qualified for, so they had to like humble themselves, suck it up, and like go back and live with their parents even though they didn't want to, and like pay down their student loans and try to get experience so that they could get an entry-level job in the field that they were an expert in. Like yes, helicopter parenting is a problem, but that doesn't at all correlate with like people having to move back in with their parents, and so I just thought that was a little bit weird. Like sometimes he'll make claims that are like completely unsubstantiated, but 99% of this is like genius, I think. It's so inspiring. It really makes you want to just be a better teacher every day. It reminds you how important um, like your relationships with your staff are, your relationships with parents are, your relationships with your students, like your classroom environment, your energy and enthusiasm, and so it is so, so worth reading, even if there's a couple things in there where I was like, Okay, the next question is, what are some of your favorite teacher movies? Even though I said I didn't want to be a teacher when I was little, for some reason, my favorite movies were Stand and Deliver and Lean on Me. And I was probably like way too young to be watching either of those movies, but that is what I would rent when we would go to the video store because they were on VHS. And we would get to pick, like me and my sister would each get to pick a movie. And like every other time I would get lean on me. And I still watch that movie like yearly. I don't know what it is about it. Like if you work in a rough school, which I kind of don't anymore, but when I used to, that was like so helpful to just like watch that school and see how bad it was. And that like things weren't as bad where I was working and see like what Mr. Clark does to like put people back in place. When he drags that kid up to the roof who like smokes crack and he's like, Joe, you're killing your brain cells anyway like ah. 
I don't know, I just love that movie. And I also cannot help but love Bad Teacher. I have that one too. I, I only even own a few DVDs anymore, but Lean On Me and Bad Teacher are two of them. Bad Teacher is just so funny. I love Cameron Diaz in it. And she is awful and she never really gets that good, but I just kind of love when she throws all the papers back at her students and says that they all suck and then throws a dodgeball at them when they get a question wrong it's just it's release you know that one is so funny so i would say yes yeah, stand and deliver lean on me bad teacher okay the next question is who was your favorite teacher and i had a lot of good teachers but the one that stands out the most is my eighth grade history and english teacher and his name was mr finkel he was from New Jersey, he was a Bruce Springsteen fan, I don't know what he was doing in Northern California at this tiny little middle school, but I had such a great time in his class. I think that's where I grew a lot as a student. Um, I don't remember as much of the English curriculum as I do the history. Like that was where I started to love US history. We learned a lot about like women's rights and I remember just like really coming into my own during that section and I would talk about women's rights all the time and we ha we would have like these discussions in class and all the boys would try to like shut me down about women's issues or whatever and I would just come back in their face and just like destroy them and it was so fun I, I loved that like he had this thing where once a year you could only use it once a year but if the whole class at one time shouted dead cow he would lay on his back like this for the rest of like the period. But you could only use it once. And so some classes would like use it at an assembly and then he would have to do it like during the assembly. But I think we used it in our class like on a test day or something. But like that was the rule. You got to use it once. We just had a bunch of like really weird like quirky things that we got to do and he encouraged discussion. And now I teach eighth grade history and English and I draw upon a lot of the things that he did so he was really influential in my life and plus since like my parents were teachers you know like he was my dad's co-worker and so um, I had written oh I wrote an essay about the most important amendment that was the essay that we had to write for his class and I wrote about the 19th amendment of course and about how the most important amendment was that you know 50% of our population that was being left out of voting got to have their voice heard and it was an amazing essay and he saved it and he gave it to me in a card when I graduated from high school and he came to my high school graduation party and gave me that card and I read the essay and I found it like a couple years ago I don't know where it is anymore but I'm sure I'll, it'll like pop up randomly and it was such a good essay like I was a better writer in eighth grade than I like am now so he must have taught us really good writing skills and I really appreciated that he saved that the next question is who are some of your favorite teacher youtubers instagrammers snapchatters etc whatever social media platform you like to use so I have a couple that I wrote down and honestly if you are a teacher on YouTube I follow you if you have ever come up on my suggestions I watch your videos and I follow you and there are some people who have lots and lots of followers and a lot of people know about them and then a few that are just getting started but I, I follow all of them and so um, the few that I'm mentioning maybe aren't as widely known as some others so I wanted to kind of like promote them to you and they are ones that teach like either upper level elementary or middle school so like I relate to them a little bit more just since I don't teach like kindergarten some of, sometimes even though I enjoy watching those videos or those vlogs I don't relate as much so um, I like teach like a girl I think she just kind of started her, her YouTube channel and I'm pretty sure she teaches middle school science and she's really funny I like her um, my teacher voice I did a little collaboration with her a little while back and she's super sweet I like her videos um, love and literacy I've also done a collab with her and she's really cool I think she teaches fifth grade but she's totally like like a middle school teacher at heart, you know what I mean? I also like to follow her on Snapchat. Jensen's trying to crash the party, I see. Um, the other channel that I've really been liking lately is Real Rap with the Reynolds. He teaches high school English, so um, ninth grade, I believe. So that's like right around the age that I teach. So I really like watching his videos as well. He's got a different perspective because he's not a woman. A couple of Instagram accounts that I really like. I just kind of like scrolled through my Instagram and looked at people who came up that I am kind of always checking out. Um, Tiff in the middle. I really like her Instagram. She also had a YouTube channel. I don't know if she still does, but I like her Instagram posts. Um, Hello Miss Teacher. 
She teaches, I think, in like Washington, D.C. I really like her posts. Um, Alyssa K. Martinez does like fashion posts. She always takes pictures um, like of her OOTDs and she's really cute. I also love Teaching in the Tropics blog. She teaches elementary, but her classroom is just beautiful. It's so bright and cheery and cute. I can't even handle it. And she teaches in the Caribbean. So of course, for me, that's like, <gasps> so I love um, following her Instagram feed. And EB Camps, they are on Teachers Pay Teachers, and then they post pictures of their products on Instagram. So that's usually where I find out about their products, and they've got awesome stuff, so I like to follow them. And then also Casey Morris teaching on Less. She used to have a different Instagram name, and she also had a YouTube channel. I don't know if she really does anymore. She's also on Teachers Pay Teachers. Most of us are on like multiple platforms, but I really like her stuff also. And there are a ton more people that I watch and follow and comment on and, and hopefully throughout these videos as people do the tag then you'll get suggestions for even more people to watch and to follow. The next question is what is one of your best classroom management tips? Just one, just give us one thing because I know this is a loaded question. For me, one of mine was to get rid of the pencil sharpener. It's so funny since like my dad also taught middle school one time we were just talking about middle schoolers and the pencil sharpener and how like right as you are like kind of getting into a groove and you're about to like give the instructions or whatever some kids like can I sharpen my pencil and then when you have that the kind like this it's like so loud like grinding 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 and then like they pull it out and it's like not quite there and they do it again and then it's all the way broken off so then they got to start over and you're just like oh my goodness and then you think, okay, I'm going to get an electric pencil sharpener. That will solve this problem. So then you get an electric pencil sharpener. And then still, right as you're like, right about to get in the groove, some kid's like, can I sharpen my pencil? And they go over and it's like, zzzz, zzzz. and it's just absolutely obnoxious. And like, I was telling my dad that and he was like, wow, middle school has not changed at all. So I actually just bought like, I think like 250 pencils with my name on them and they're mechanical pencils. So they don't need to be sharpened. Although now they like run out of lead or like kids are like, does anybody have like 0.75 lead? Does anybody have 0.5 lead? I'm like, oh, they will, they will always find a way. But I encourage mechanical pencils or pens. Just use pens. If you mess up, cross it out. I do not care. I would much rather have you like cross something out in pen than have to deal with sharpening your pencil or even dealing with lead. So if there's something that just like, like irks you, just get rid of it. Like for me, no more. You just can't ever sharpen your pencil. Nope. Sorry. Oh, and then they'll be like, oh, it's really full. Like, let me go dump out the pencil sharpener all over the carpet that was supposed to end up in the trash can. I know, I know you were trying to get it in the trash can and now it is everywhere. So yeah, no no more pencil sharpeners. Sometimes they just bring their own little, you know, personal ones. That is fine, but also dump it out at home because I just don't even want to deal with that either. So if there's something that bugs you, just don't let your kids do it. And the last question is, what is one reason you decided to become a teacher? I'm sure there are like 50 reasons why, but what is one? So for me, one reason why I wanted to become a teacher and a history teacher in particular was because once I went to college, I just started learning a more multifaceted history, a more multicultural history. And I hadn't learned a lot of those things in junior high and high school. And my world was just so opened. And I wanted to bring that into like middle school, high school classrooms. I feel like throughout my many years of college, it took me 12 years to finally do my BA credential and masters. So I'm finally done with college. But even like once I had gotten to the point where I wanted to get my credential, I felt like my perspective and my mind had just so been transformed mostly by history classes and just given me a new outlook on the world and really like made me a better person and a more understanding person and I just wanted to bring that into the classroom. I felt like Latin American history was so absent from like just the normal history classes and that can have such an effect on your identity and who you are as a person when you don't learn about yourself and you don't see yourself showing up in history and you kind of feel like you don't count or you don't matter. When I learned about black history, it was almost always, you know, just slavery or like Martin Luther King Jr. and a very watered down Martin Luther King Jr. and once I had a, a fuller understanding of black history and not even separating that at all from American history, it 
it changed my world really. Learning so much about Native American history really changed my whole understanding of the United States as well. So there was just just so much that I wanted to bring into my classroom and make my history courses so much more well-rounded and so much more multicultural. This year I get to teach ancient history, so of course we are including so much more about the Middle East and about Asia, and I'm excited to kind of challenge myself, teach something I haven't taught before, and take that same mindset where like I need to learn first and kind of have my world transformed a little bit and then take that into my classroom so i'm really excited about that for this year so anyway i had so much fun doing this tag if you also make youtube videos please try out this tag and then let me know that you've done it because i want to watch you and find out even more about you i hope everyone's having a great summer and i will see you in my next video bye